Okay, this is the chain and belt drive. So here we have our chain drive that we're going to use as our example. Uh, the chain drive, we have two different size sprocket gears. These gears here, they have bigger teeth. We have our chain that wraps around those two sprocket gears. Now we can put more than two sprocket gears here on a chain drive. So we could have another one that would go up here and we could spread this one further out if we needed to. So the chain drive doesn't just have to have two sprocket gears. It could have more than two. So for the sprocket gears, those are going to interlink with the chain and it might be a little loose but that's okay because we don't want it super tight or else it's really hard to get on and off. So when you use the chain drive, the chain drive you have to be very careful with because the links on the chain will break easily and the way you separate this is you simply take your th fingernail and you put it in between the links and then you slowly slide it apart like that. And then when you put it back together, you put one end in and then you slide the other end over until it snaps in place. And then we can wrap that around the outside and reattach the chain, okay? So the chain drive, we have our small gear being the input gear and our big gear here on this side being the output gear. So when we turn our mechanism, we are increasing the torque but decreasing the speed over on this side. So this is our drive, this is our driven gear. We have both linear or rotary motion here for our two gears. So the input and output types are rotary. We have the two drive shafts are parallel to one another. The flow of power is reversible because we could turn each of these drive shafts and the gears and it will turn the other drive shaft and gear. And the direction of travel is reversible because we can turn left to right on both the drive shafts. So that's our chain drive and then we have our belt drive. In our belt drive we have two pulleys. We could have a third or fourth pulley, so just like the chain drive, and the pulley is like a wheel, except it's grooved to fit a rubber band inside of. Uh, these are a little tricky to use because these, sometimes you need to put some tape inside in between the drive shaft collar and the pulley to make them stick together. Uh, so we have a uh, two similar sized pulleys. And so what's happening here is we have uh, both rotary input and output movement. The speed and the torque are constant because our two pulleys here are the same size. The flow of power is reversible because we can turn either one of these pulleys and it will turn the other. The direction of travel is reversible so we can go back left and right on the pulley and the other side will work. Uh, the trick, the key part of using the pulley is that you could take your rubber band and make a figure eight out of it and when you do that you can take the rubber band and you can wrap it around and what will happen now is when you turn the one pulley, the other pulley will go the opposite direction. So when we have the pulley rubber band going wrapping around like the chain drive, both pulleys go the same direction. Now when I turn it, they are going to go opposite directions. So by doing a figure eight on the pulley band, we can then change the direction of the pulleys. So that's the advantage, one advantage of using the pulley as opposed to the chain. Plus the chain is going to be stronger than the pulley because we are just using a, a rubber band here and here we're using an actual linked chain. So in real life this would be metal and this would be a heavy duty band that we would use to go around the pulleys. So this has the advantage of being able to be reversed and this one has the advantage of being stronger.